What you want to do is go, yeah, go up on your, yep, all right, is drop them down below dorsiflexion range so you get that compression and see if that's really provocative. Okay, and they say, they will say things like, I don't like that position. They'll often in their, thanks, that's, don't upset your, your foot too much. Um, they'll often talk in that case about shoes being a factor. I'm much better in shoes that have a higher heel than I am in um, shoes that have a flat heel. And that will be the same with plantaris as well. So we haven't actually talked about plantaris tendinopathy. Maybe we'll do that in the differential, but that's, you're all familiar with the plantaris muscle that sits right next to the Achilles, can be within the Achilles sheath, can be right next to the Achilles. That's affected in dorsiflexion because of the compression between the plantaris and the Achilles. Sometimes it's a direct compression, sometimes it's just a friction. So you actually don't have much change in your tendon, but you seem to get a real friction load through there. So that can be a real factor as well. So you want to, um, if you think it's plantaris, and these people's pain will be more medial and a little bit higher. So it will tend to be up through here. So it won't be the classic, this is my Achilles tendon pain. It will be a little bit higher and a little bit more medial. So that's a, a good clue. That with your shoes will, will make you start to think that you might have um, a plantaris type of problem. Okay. Um, so we've got some really good clues about dysfunction. We've got some idea, we've got some confirmation that it is either in the Achilles or in the Achilles insertion. What we need now to do is do an examination on the couch to try and see if we can just make sure nothing else is contributing to your pain. So do you want to come over and lie on your tummy and hang your toes over the edge? No, put your feet down that end for me. Lie on your tummy. Yep, that's lovely. Okay, so at this point, um, I'm really just looking for swelling. I'm not going to palpate this Achilles. Guess what will happen if I touch a sore Achilles? It's going to hurt. It doesn't really tell me anything at all, okay? So palpation is not worth it. The, all of the tests that they talk about, um, the London Hospital sign, where it's um, less painful in plantar flexion and more painful in dorsiflexion. Um, the one, the movie sign, not the movie sign, the sign where you have a lump in your Achilles and if it moves up and down when you dorsiflex and plantar flex, it's in your Achilles. If it doesn't move up, it's peri, up and down, it's peritendon. Again, you know, in these complex conditions, it's, it's, it doesn't hold true. Um, remembering that we can have a tendon problem and a peritendon problem, your history will be quite different. So a peritendon will be less about our energy storage and release loads, it will be much more about movement related loads. Okay, so these are the people that will have done, um, maybe put on a pair of flippers and done some swimming where you're just frictioning. So your, your tendon is not being loaded much, but it's being rubbed against the peritendon tissues. Um, so that you can sometimes um, see a more general swelling. They will have um, more generalised pain and they won't warm up. Okay, so a tendon pain classically warms up. Peritendon pain will just get worse and worse and worse and worse as you go on. So that's an, another really good sign. Um, so you can lay your fingers just on the, 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 the peritendon area, get it to dorsiflex and plantar flex. Can you just go through range of motion? And you can sometimes feel the crepitus if there is a peritendon. But by far the best way to do it is with a stethoscope. So compare, have a listen to the, the crackiness, because often you can't feel it, often they don't feel it. You put a stethoscope on it and it's as obvious as all well, heck that there's peritendon problems in there um, and compare it to the other side because sometimes it's hard to discriminate the noise that you generate by the stethoscope on the skin 
versus the noise that's coming from the tendon. So always compare to the other side. So that's always very worthwhile. Okay. Hey, say that again. Depends on what you, yeah, depends on what you're looking for. So if you think it's just a pure Achilles tendon, just straight onto the back, okay? If you think it's a plantaris, go medial and higher, okay? Because you'll pick up that friction between the two, okay? And we'll also look further down here as well. I'll do that in, in a minute. But you'll have crepitus in and around FHL and tib post as well, okay? So all of those things can give you a tino Synovitis, if it's in the foot, these are tenovaginitis, so there's no synovial membrane around the Achilles or between the Achilles and the, and the plantaris, so it's a slightly different pathology. Nobody knows if it's inflammation or not. Um, there's not a lot of good evidence. Certainly uh, in and around bursa, there's no evidence that it's a burst, truly a bursitis. It's actually... Um, a thickening of the bursal wall, probably more than an inflammatory condition.